Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel, there's another fan TV. Back at you another video. Let the content in this video go ahead and smash that like button. Let the content in this channel go ahead and hit subscribe. Hey, look, man, training camp daily, day seven. We back at it. What's going on with the Baltimore Ravens? You know, if there's news, we're going to talk about it. All right, so first things first, we want to start off with David Ojabo signed his rookie deal. He was literally the last rookie in the NFL to sign this deal, but that's over and done with. I think before it was reports like it was over like uh, some third year guarantees that might be like $100,000. Now, while to somebody who's making millions of dollars, that might not seem like a lot. Hey, man, when the NFL is done with you, they're going to throw you out. So get every penny while you can. I didn't mind it. I knew I knew he would get signed. No big deal. So he's officially on the Ravens. Obviously, he's still hurt. But now he's going to rehab at the facility, I would assume. And he start working and getting ramped up for the season to, to contribute at some point this year. Now, to get on the roster, because the Ravens are already full at 90 men, they had to cut somebody. They ended up cutting wide receiver uh, Trayvon Clark. Uh, UDFA wide receiver from California. Didn't hear his name too much during the practices, so I guess it's not a big surprise that he ended up being cut. Um, you know, it's the NFL's a business. That's how it goes, you know. So, uh, let's talk about who was there and who was not. Now, previously we talked about the guys who were out. Uh, the guys that returned back to practice, Morgan Moses, Zeitler, Boyle, all came back today. Now, guys who were still out. DuVernay with the thigh rules. Calais Campbell, I would assume, is another veteran day. Brandon Stevens may have an undisclosed injury, so he's out for the second day as well. I'm assuming his injury is also minor as they haven't really disclosed it. Um, and long snapper Nick Moore, apparently um, I saw something on Twitter that his dog was going through like kidney failure, so he was there with his dog and, you know, taking his dog to the vet. And hopefully everything works out for him in that capacity. Um Chris Horton, the special teams coach, said that he expects Nick Moore to be back tomorrow. So uh, we'll see what goes on with that. All right. Now, something very interesting is happening at the Ravens where this is not – it's on the field related, but it's from an outside source. Now, this is what I mean. Lamar Jackson's QB coach, his personal QB coach, Adam Dadeau, has been at practice for the last two days. Now, this is – it's not unprecedented, but it is a little strange. I mean, the Ravens have a QB coach and James Urban who was there. So, obviously, this is a guy that DeMar worked with the whole offseason in, in the dough, right? So, I mean, I guess it's not 100% um, out of the ordinary that he would want him, here, want him there, seek his opinion, get his input, and see what's happening. Um, but you have to wonder how James Urban, his actual QB coach for the Ravens, feels about that. But according to Greg Roman, officer coordinator, obviously, that the Ravens are open to all of the those ideas, and I guess they're working on like a collaborative partnership kind of way. We'll see how long he stays here, if he's here for just the rest of this week, or is he going to be a fixture at training camp the whole way out? We'll see. I mean, he's not only Lamar Jackson's QB coach. He has a lot of different players in the NFL that he works with, so maybe he'll be hitting different training camps along the way. We'll see. Um, anything that helps Lamar Jackson get better, Greg Roman said he's all there for it. And I agree. If it's helping Lamar Jackson to have his personal guy here, bring his personal guy in. You know, you got to put your feelings to the side if there are any uh, feelings about it and do what's best for the team. All right. Now, on the field, it was a hot practice, man. Y'all know how Baltimore can get in August and the Ravens players felt it. Apparently, there were several players um, by the end of practice that were limping off because of cramps. They said it was a long physical day of practice, really hot outside. I mean, I was outside. They said it was damn near 100 degrees. So I can understand why, you know, players are coming down with cramps and things like that. Now, uh, before all of that, what happened? Lamar Jackson official on the day once again. I heard, I saw some different counts, uh, seven for, 17 for 24. I've seen a 23 for 31. Uh, I'm going to go with the 23 for 31 because I think that it counts everything he did, 7 on 7 and 11 on 11 included. So good day for Lamar Jackson. Uh, they did say there was one point of uh, frustration, though, when they couldn't get the playing fast enough, and he ended up putting the ball in the air because he was, he was upset about that. Now, this is something that, get this out the way now, because the Ravens repeatedly have an issue where Greg Roman or maybe Lamar Jackson, whoever's fault it is, the Ravens get lined up with seven seconds or less at the line of scrimmage. And at that point, Lamar Jackson cannot make any checks. He cannot make any hot reads. Um, uh, he has to stick with the play that is called because – by that time you get lined up, it's time to hike the ball. The Ravens need to get the play calls in faster this year. So I'm hoping that 
this is the first time I've heard about, you know, they're not getting to playing fast enough. We need the Ravens to get to the line of scrimmage. 12 to 15 seconds on the clock. So Lamar Jackson can scan the defense pre-snap, make adjustments if need be. Because we know he can read defenses post-snap. We know that. But we need for him to read defense pre-snap so that he can make any adjustments necessary so we can be in the best play possible. All right. Now, a um, lot of passes to Bateman, a lot of passes to Andrews. We've gone on the pros and cons of that. Pros is we know these guys are going to be big targets and they're showing in practice. Cons is we need to hear about other people making plays. Simple as that. All right. He did throw another interception today, second practice in a row. This one was a uh, deep ball, apparently, to Mikai Polk. Uh, kind of a jump ball kind of thing. And Pepe Williams came down with it. Uh, ran it back like 20, 30 yards, they said. Now, Pepe Williams is one of my favorite rookies in this class. I feel like he has a lot of that Marcus Peters kind of swag, kind of energy to him. Where he's going to talk trash, get it in your face, and let you know he made that play. And the Ravens need that kind of dog mentality. I think that when I think of Ravens football, I think of guys who act like Pepe Williams. So I'm always happy to hear when he's making plays and standing out. All right. But good thing, Lamar Jackson bounced back. Very next play, he hits Mark Andrews for a touchdown. So, hey, short memories. In football, when it's a bad play, in sports in general, when it's a bad play, short memory, on to the next play. How can I get better? And he got better right there, hitting Mark Andrews for a touchdown. Okay. Uh, biggest player in practice, it seemed like. Uh, Anthony Brown threw a deep ball to uh, James Prochet and ended up scoring a 70 yard touchdown. Now, interesting note on that touchdown was that Jamar Bridges was down the, was down at 40 yards down the field blocking and allowed Jonathan James Prochet to get that touchdown. Now, good for multiple reasons. James Prochet is making a play. Now, since Anthony, Anthony Brown was throwing this ball, it might have been second team defense, but I'm still going to give James Prochet his credit for making that play. But what I like to hear is Shamar Bridges down the field blocking. Because it's that kind of effort play that can help separate yourself and make some noise on this team and help you secure a roster spot. Now, when you're the fifth wide receiver, it's not going to be about catching passes. It's not going to be about getting 100 yards a game. It's going to be about doing the dirty, small plays that can help you stand out to coaching staff. Say, okay, this guy's willing to try. He's willing to work. It's a hot day of practice. You run 40 yards down the field to, to, to block and practice. To get, so your guy can score a touchdown. To me, that's a big play by Shamar Bridges. Great play by James Prochet. We're going to need him this year. Uh, whether he's a wide receiver two or whether he's in the slot, we're going to need James Prochet. All right. Um, now, some stuff with some one-on-one -on -one drills, okay? Uh, Benjamin Victor beat uh, Kyle Fuller for a touchdown. I think it's about 40 yards. He's beaten Kyle Fuller, I think, maybe three straight days. He beat him at the training camp practice. I saw that made a highlight real catch on the sideline. I believe he beat him yesterday, and he's beating him today again. Now, Kyle Fuller is not a – he's not the best man-to-man -man corner. Um, and Benjamin Victor has a severe height advantage over Kyle Fuller as well. So it's already kind of a mismatch anyway. But what I'm going to take away from this is, obviously, Kyle Fuller is going to play a lot of his own. And two, Benjamin Victor is making another guy who's making the case for the wide receiver five position. I talked about Benjamin Victor yesterday. Hey, I'm talking about him today. When you hear start hearing guys' names come up repeatedly, watch out for that guy. He's making a name. He's making a mistake to be on this team. All right. Next guy, another guy making a mistake to be on this team, um, Jalen Moore. Now, Jalen Moore had caught. He was active in practice. He caught passes from all three quarterbacks. So that's Jackson, uh, Huntley, and Brown. When you can work with everybody and get rhythm with everybody, that means you're a trusted target. And if he could be a trusted target for everybody, well, Lamar Jackson, most importantly, that's how you get on the squad, man. That's how you, that's how you get on the team. Uh, now, one more from the one-on-ones. Um, in the previous videos, I talked about Isaiah likely getting jammed to the line uh, repeatedly, uh, once by uh, Brandon Stevens and I think by Kyle Hamilton as well. He rectified that today. He went up against Kyle Hamilton. He won all three one-on-ones, two short games, one long game. That's what I like to hear. Get better every day. I really believe that if used effectively on this team this season, Isaiah Likely could really catch between 40 and 50 passes. If used effectively, he really could. Now, I would feel less confident about that if he could get jammed the line of scrimmage by any safety, any uh, slot corner, whatever. I need to see that he can use that big frame, get off the line, and make a play. So that's a good start today. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that about, about Isaiah Likely, as he is still my favorite rookie, as I say all the time. All right. Defensive side, 
Now, we talked about Pepe Williams making that interception. That's a great play by Pepe Williams. He's going to make the team, in my opinion. I don't think there's any doubt about that, as he was a fourth-round pick this year. But also, he's just one of the better corners on this team, in my opinion. Um, especially when we're talking about fourth, fifth corners. He's right there with Brandon Stevens and Jalen Armour Davis. I mean, those guys are all right there in a bunch. Um, it's going to be harder for other guys like Denzel Williams and Kevon Seymour to make the roster, Robert Jackson to make the roster win. I think the Ravens already have a lot of defensive backs, a lot of corners already. That's kind of solidified, in my opinion. Now, uh, defensive line. Brent Urban and Justin Matabike had sacks today. Now, this is important because this means that it was interior pressure. We know where Brent Urban lines up. We know where Justin Mata, uh, Matabike, excuse me. Oh, my gosh. We know where he lines up. Dead center, rushing the guard. Rushing the guard, rushing the center. So that interior pass short for the Ravens is coming along light, nicely. And we already know Dalen Hayes. Uh, Odafi Owe, Justin Houston are guys that are going to bring that pressure off the edge. Now, the Ravens can bring that together. Throw Calais Campbell in the middle. Throw Travis Jones in the middle. You have a solidified, solid pass rush where the Ravens might not have to blitz as often because that pass rush is going to get home. I love it. I actually love to hear that. Marcus Williams, good pass coverage in the red zone. Marcus Williams is brought in to make plays on the football. Now, apparently, Rashad Bateman caught one on him in the red zone, but it was really tight coverage, really close. Sounded like it could have went either way. Bateman made, made the catch, so good on him. But Marcus Williams was there. He also deflected a pass that was intended for Tylen Wallace. Marcus Williams was, was brought into this team to do just that. Make plays on the football. When the ball's in the air, I have confidence, because I've seen him do it in New Orleans, that the ball is his. Now, he just has to learn the defense, play with that freeness and that, and that ability to move around, and he's going to bring that same thing to the Ravens. So I was glad to hear that. I loved it. Um, Marcus Williams is an important part of this Ravens secondary of this Ravens defense. If they want to be where well, I think they could be, which is a top three, top five defense. All right. Okay. Um, Vince Beagle. Vince Beagle maybe apparently made a play on a read option with Anthony Brown. Uh, and Vince Beagle's had a really, really good training camp, apparently. Now, this is important because the Ravens have... Um, I'm not going to say issues at outside linebacker, but they are they are a little thinner than I would like it to be just because Ojabo and Tyus Bowser are injured. If Ojabo and Tyus Bowser were okay, I really wouldn't have the concerns that I have. But since they're injured, it's like, I oh, we're a little thin for the first six to eight weeks of the season. So if Beagle can step up and make plays, that, that relieves my, my stress a little bit about the outside linebacker position and that we have enough guys to cover. Because look, Houston, Hayes, uh, uh, Adafi Owe are three guys that I have a supreme confidence in, but you need more than three because it's going to be a rotation. You know, guys want to get tired. So you need more than three. So it's good to hear his name. Hopefully we can hear the names of some more outside linebackers making plays as well. All right. Now, last but not least, uh, Kyle Fuller did suffer an injury at the end of the camp. Uh, ended, uh, sorry, at the end of the practice today. Uh, it could be a minor injury. It's apparently, uh, he, he was walking gingerly for a little bit. He tried to come back. He wasn't He wasn't right. So, so the trainers took him off the field or whatever. And that's what I honestly, that's what I want to hear in terms of if you see a guy's not right, remove him from practice. All right. Uh, we're not in the season. This is not the time to be fighting through injuries, proving how tough you are. Uh, remove from practice. Let's keep going. And um, hopefully this injury, maybe he only sits out a day or two. Maybe not at all. We'll see how he recovers and that he's back for the next practice. Now, that sounded like a good, solid day for the Ravens. Offense played well. Defense played well. I want to hear this continuously that it's not just one side dominating the ball. Now, we will have some days with offense dominates. We will have some days with defense dominates. We've seen both already. But the best practice to me are when the offense gets some, the defense gets some. Because this Ravens team is a good team, and they should be able to one-up each other on both sides when given an opportunity. Um, so, like I said, solid day of practice. We'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll be back with training camp daily. It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.